wonder if there's anything good on. Can't wait to vote tomorrow. President Joe Biden pledges allegiance publicly to CCP. It's happening! Oh, it's happening! It's happening! Get the important shit! What's up, guys? Thanks for stopping by. Today, we're going to go over vehicle preparedness things you can do to set yourself up for success and some things that you probably didn't see coming. Now there is a great quote that says, luck favors the prepared. You're obviously in that boat along with me. Otherwise you wouldn't be here watching this video. You're trying to learn something just like our good Lord flannel daddy says, information is free. So if you're anything like me, <clears throat> hard headed and stubborn, slightly autistic splash of the downs maybe minus the silverback gorilla strength um, you want to learn and you want to be prepared for anything catastrophic in the upcoming future i.e between now and november let's face it let's be real so that being said there is also another great quote that says i'm too drunk to taste this chicken now, I really don't know how that correlates with the first thing I said, but it is important. So, all right, so we're in the car. You've already failed test number one. You're not supposed to get in the cars with strangers. You need to know how to get in and get out of your vehicle and move around in your vehicle with it on. So you got all the things that your favorite gun tuber told you to buy check you need to be proficient and know what to do and how to get your stuff out while you're in your vehicle and while you're getting in and out of your vehicle the main thing is to get in your your car whatever car truck and drive around and get in and out. Practice getting in and out with all your stuff on to see what hangs up. Is it something you need to move in your car or is it a piece of kit that you need to adjust? <clears throat> so a couple of tips on how I get my stuff out. Uh, a little bit a little bit of it is prep work. So me, I always like to go barrel down into the passenger floorboard. It still gives a passenger plenty of room for their feet, backpack, all that stuff. I usually, I don't wedge it, but I usually place it in between center console and their seat. Uh, you want to expose, make sure that your pistol grip is exposed to where when you need to bail, you can reach down and grab it and then start pulling your primary out. Now, first thing that you want to do, obviously, if you're fixing a bail, vehicle should be either stopped or slow slow enough to bail to where it ain't gonna hurt too bad when you bail out so first thing that i like to do you're gonna pop your door obviously and then get your foot put it on the door and you're gonna kick it open and hold it so that causes any kind of um whiplash type motion like the vehicle lurching backwards and the door coming back closed on you uh it's just safe bet to when you kick that door open use your foot and pin the door to its utmost open position from there that's when you're gonna grab your firearm and basically the two motions that i make uh it's like backing out of your driveway it's a three-point turn so i'm coming straight up with it like this now as i pull it up i'm getting my hand on the forend and the buttstock is going to basically go into the back seat. So if you have back seat passengers, they need to know what your plan is so you don't butt stroke them in the face. Side note, I've done that to someone before. Hilarious. So pop the door, pin it open, 
buttstock to the back seat. And then all you do is pivot your barrel around. Barrel comes straight out. And now you can literally just bail uh, in the direction of travel out of the vehicle uh, and not be snagged on anything. When you get in your vehicle, obviously it helps to make sure you need adjust your steering wheel, your seats, all that stuff to make sure you have plenty of room with your kit and stuff on. So now uh, this was the 14.5. Now we're going to do it with the 18 inch. Obviously, uh, when you're getting in a vehicle, with your rifle uh, sling wise you want to have some sort of sling retention system so ranger bands um, I've been using like a old triple mag placard with the bungee ties I'll cut those bungees out and tie them around my forehand uh, and so it gives me a nice little bungee cord that I can slip my sling in whether I want to mount it that way or if I want to wrap it around the stock and hit it with the ranger band i can do that so same thing we're going to put the magazine in between the seat and the center console to where i can get that pistol grip and it's going to be the same motion butt stock to the back seat only this time with the 18 inch and the muzzle brake that i'm using what you're going to see me do is i'm going to literally grab the very tip of the barrel so that i know where the end of it is and then all i'm going to do is muscle um muscle memory and um using my hand coming across the center console to make sure that i don't snag it on anything with my hand being at the very end of it i'm not worried about shooting myself but um coming across i can guarantee that it's not going to snag on anything so same thing we're going to pop the door pin the door to the open position grab the rifle butt stock to the back seat and then from here I'm just going to manhandle that muzzle brake, the very tip of my rifle, and then I'm going to use that and pull it across my body to punch out, and then I can bail out just like I did with the 14.5. So, getting a couple of reps like that in definitely helps. It's not that bad. Especially when you go barrel down like i said butt stock to the back seat and then punch out it's really really not bad it's when you start sweeping stuff or when you're barrel up and you're trying to do that like know how have a plan on which way the gun's going when you're bailing out and practice it and you'll be golden so again pin the door open butt stock to the back seat three point turn getting out so aside from regular vehicle maintenance, <clears throat> you've got things like roof racks that you can purchase, uh, trailer baskets like this. These are all things that you can add to your vehicle to help you carry more stuff, which more stuff doesn't necessarily equal better, but uh, I always recommend carrying excess water. You never can have too much water. So as you can see on this basket here, I could have multiples of these. Uh, also translates over into fuel. You can carry excess fuel, which I highly recommend. On top of that, a uh, little side note, carrying up a couple of extra cans of spray paint. If doo-doo does hit the fan and you have 47 red tanks on the back of your vehicle, you're probably now a target. You have valuable resources with those uh, cans of spray paint. I would pick the most docile, gayest color you could find at Walmart and hose those things down. It's better than red. Uh, you've got this option for water. Uh, milk crates are also an excellent idea for storage. Uh, they can be strapped down using toe straps super easy you're going to want to carry uh, extra medical of course these are just some examples of stuff that i carry you want to do be sure to carry extra tools uh, something happens to your vehicle on the side of the road obviously you want to be able to handle it yourself you don't want to be stuck like chuck so carry extra tools with you if you can afford it 
But if you have extra ones laying around, it's always good to throw them in a toolbox just to have. On top of that, you've got your standard bug out equipment that we've already talked about in previous videos. Some other items that are handy to have are your uh, vehicle powered air compressors for your tires. These are super cheap, Amazon, 30 bucks. That saved my butt plenty of times. Manual fuel transfer pumps. You can pick these up at um, O'Reilly's, AutoZone, Walmart. These things are less than 20. If you run out of gas, you can siphon it out of other vehicles uh, or other objects if need be. different types of tire repair and fix of flats you never know those are always good things to have in your vehicle uh, regardless if doo-doo hits the fan or not uh, power inverters these things uh, you can charge stuff up if you need to and then lastly something you should already have in your vehicle once again is jumper cables aside from a few of these items I pretty much carry all these things in my car at all times. Uh, and they, like I've said, it saved my skin multiple times. Uh, when doo-doo hasn't hit the fan, just stuff breaks. It's a part of the game. But like I said, guys, number one priority is make sure that your whip is reliable and it's not a piece of shit, uh, cause that's gonna save your ass more than anything. Guys, I appreciate you stopping by. Be sure to give the video a like, share, subscribe, all that stuff really helps the channel out. Um, I'd like to see y'all down in the comments, spreading some good knowledge. Holy spread the knowledge. Uh, I love having conversations with you guys, sharing tips, tricks, uh, anything that you learned. A lot of it's common sense, but it's the biggest hurdles that I've screwed up the most on. So getting in and out of your car, with your kit proficiently is extremely important and as you can see in the b-roll uh, i'm running my 18 inch so don't think that you have to have a dedicated truck gun that's super foldable and super small you know grandpa ran a 20 inch lever action 30 30 behind the seat for years and he did just fine so take the tools that you have and make it work be proficient with it I hope you learned something guys and then if doo-doo ever does hit the fan hopefully the knowledge that we have shared with one another keeps you vertical and not in one of these plots behind me <laughs>